Hello friends. So in what I'm thinking is probably the last video because I'm not sure how I'm going to upload them. But the last video in which I talked about my morning spread and how that practice has been going for me and how I have elaborated on it um, in an attempt to milk it for every ounce of mental alertness I can milk out of it. I mentioned that um, I had started a nine card practice as well. So this is something I think I first started by just adding it. Again, not getting out of that morning spread quite enough wakefulness. Now that I've started sorting the morning spread, I feel I am getting I've made it complicated enough that it is that it's a good test, let's say that. It's a good test of whether I'm going to wake up or whether I'm not going to wake up and I really just need to go back to bed for a while. So now that's the morning spread. And so this nine card spread, I've decided to, well, I don't, did I really elaborate on it? Maybe it's after I did. Anyway, eventually I elaborated on it so that it took almost an hour sometimes. I think that was by adding a second deck mainly. So um, at first I was adding it to the morning spread before I started really sorting and looking at the morning spread cards in just different ways, in a bunch of different ways. So what this nine card spread is your basic nine card grid, you know, where you have three rows and three columns. So it's three by three by three. It's one of my favorite spreads in general because of the different ways that the cards can interrelate. So one thing that I wanted to do with it, the main thing that I wanted to do with it is to have that nine card grid and within that grid to look for certain things within the spread itself. But what I ended up doing is looking at each card and looking at it, excuse me, kind of each of these, looking at each of these things in each card and whether I think these things, these categories could be found in the cards. So it's a, it's a structured way of, it's a structured way of relating to each individual card in the deck instead of looking at the totality of the nine cards. So essentially, I look at these, I pull the cards, I might look at, you know, what suits are there, etc. anything that stands out. Um, and, but not, I don't start interpreting at that point. What I do is I go through these categories, and here are the categories. Mysteries. So what mystery are, what larger mystery are you going through during this time? And that can be the mystery of the Six of Swords, like, well, where are you going? Who is that helping you? You know, what, what conflict are you leaving? So it can evoke more than one question. Um, and I think my way of doing that, because I can see the mystery or questions, um, larger questions in pretty much any card. And so that's a downfall of this system. system. Because if you have that many questions for one minor arcana card, <laughs> then, and you've got a total of nine cards, that's a, that's a lot of mysteries that are just a bunch of questions that aren't necessarily going to get solved. Because these bigger mysteries, to me, are ones that aren't necessarily going to be solved in the spread. Maybe they will be, maybe they won't be. So I look at each card to see whether or not there's 
a bigger mystery. And there could be cards that really don't have mystery. Um, like the Three of Cups, most people know who their friends are or who they would get together with. So I'm not sure that that card has a lot of mystery to it. Um, it could in a given context, um, but in general, I probably wouldn't look at that as a card that has much in the way of mystery. Um, you know, unless somebody wasn't very connected to their family or didn't have a group, I would say the same thing with the Ten of Cups. It's easily assumed that that has to do with a family or a group that you feel really comfortable with, you know, adopted family, um, friend, groups, whatever. But anyway, so the first one is mysteries. The second one is initiations, cards that indicate an initi initiation or a crossroad, like uh, the three of wands is a crossroad. Um, I often um, think of the four of wands as a milestone on a larger journey. And so I could see that also as an initiation or a crossroad. Um, many uh, decks depict the Six of Wands as kind of an initiation. Um, the Judgment card can be seen in, as an initiation. The Hanged Man could be seen as an initiation. So, um, you know, what's going on in the Hierophant could be seen as an initiation, or not. It doesn't have to be. Um, so, again, there's the context of the Nine Cards can still be taken into um, into whether or not any given card in it is um, in the nine card spread is interpreted as being an initiation or a crossroad. Blessings. Many, many cards can be seen of as having a blessing um, as part of them. If we return to the six of swords, that's the blessing of, of having an out, right? You are leaving um, a unpleasant situation and moving towards something more pleasant or safer. So, um, so again, these are nine categories, and you, any given card can have multiples of these categories. And these categories can apply to multiple different cards. So it gets a little on the complicated side. So, right, blessings. Um, kind of more specific, but also blessings after a fashion, is helpers or allies. So these would more often be uh, court cards, but not all court cards in a given spread are necessarily allies. But... Um, Again, depending on how they're interacting with the cards around them. And figures within cards. For example, again, if I return to the Six of Swords, the, the person polling the vote is usually considered secondary to the person who is surrounded by the swords, usually a downcast figure with a child, that they would be considered the protagonist. The person polling the boat is um, is a bit of a mystery person and is a helper. So maybe you want to look into that, maybe you don't, but there is a helper in that card. Even though it's not a court card and it's a you know it's a secondary figure in in the card. So helpers and allies, just what kind of helpers and allies are there within this group of cards. Also, which I think of, sep I, I include helpers and allies kind of with blessings, but separate, just pointing them out separately. And then there's relationships and connectedness. To me, relationships and connectedness have to do with cards that have more than one person in them, and usually more than one person of import. Like that secondary figure in the Six of Swords, I wouldn't think of as a relationship. But the Three of Cups, to me, would be a relationship. Certainly the Ten the ten of 
cups, um, but even the the um, page of cups and his fish, <laughs> because he is focused on that fish. I could see that as a relationship. Um, I could see the two acolytes with the hierophants um, as potentially being a relationship if, you know, if we take it as a long-term, not an incidental, somebody just kneeling to be blessed and then exiting, but rather people who are learning from him. Um, yeah, and or connections. So within, you know, if there's, and this kind of depends on depictions within decks, but if there appears to be a lot of cards that have to do with nature, um, say the Seven of Pentacles and maybe the Eight of Cups where you're walking off along the beach or whatever, a connection could be a connection to something that is not another human being or, you know, it can be nature. So it can be pointed out that there's a strong connection to nature, whether in the spread as a whole or within a series of cards. Um, if the pentacles are appearing to be about money, it can be a connection to money. So relationships and connections, those are that's one category. Um, okay, next is sensitivities. Things that are likely to hit you well. In other words, you're sensitive to something positive. Say that there's a lot of cups. Then it could, you know, if it's a lot of positive cups, say you have the Ten of Cups, the Three of Cups, and the Six of Cups, it's easy to think that to to say well you're sensitive to um, communal you know communal activity with other people is something that you're sensitive to you're positively sensitive to it's going to it's going to uplift you um, but I'm I'm more actually looking for things that are negative. In, in other words, things to be aware that you're sensitive to so that you don't expose yourself excessively to them. So if you have the Five of Cups, you're sensitive to grief um, or the blues or whatever the case may be. Um, if it's the Four of Cups, you're sensitive to the doldrums. Um, so in other words, these things might hit, hit you harder than they would at other times. And the next one is abilities. And again, this is the one where almost any card you can kind of see an ability. Six of Swords, you have the ability to leave a different, difficult situation. Um, you know, you have the ability to seek advice in the Hierophant uh, from, from somebody who has a, a particular ethical standpoint or whatever the case may be. So almost every card can have abilities. So these are ways that kind of complicate, things that kind of complicate the spread. So next is decisions. What card indicate that, and sometimes there's very few there could be very few sensitivities, there could be there's usually lots of abilities, but there could be very few decision points or very few crossroads or something like that. Then again, some cards have decisions baked into them. They have very obvious decisions. Uh, you know, the Two of Swords, which is like not being able to make a decision. Um, the Two of Wands being a decision, All, you know, the Twos in general. Um, why can't I think? Um, of course, you know, the Lover's card is a card of choices and decisions. 
I can't think of anything at the moment, but there's there are other um, I mean, even if you think of the Three of Cups, all right, three friends, who are you getting, you know, this is a question, it's a decision you have to make is, who is that? <laughs> who are those people going to be? What, how are you, you know, who are you getting together with? If you don't already know that, if it isn't already baked into your day or your week or when, whatever time period this is, has to do with, then then that question arises or there's a decision that needs to be made regarding it. Um, and then lastly, something that to me is becoming less attached to specific cards, but is a question for the spread, and that is um, what is being overcome or advanced through the course of these cards which is usually for me kind of top to bottom. Other people might interpret it in other ways, but is you know, what is being overcome or advanced? And sometimes things are advanced and then they backslide within a, a space of nine cards. But, you know, looking at that, the other, and I thought of another one the other day is not necessarily a good thing. Again, I'm, I'm taking something relatively simple, a nine card spread, and I'm complicating it. Um, but would be to say what, to pick out of the cards what needs to be heard. For example, um, with the and again, this is influenced by the cards around it, but the Six of Swords, or excuse me, the Six of Wands could be, um, we're proud of you, because there's usually a group in, involved, so we're proud of you. You've done good. Um, the Three of Wands could be, um, you know, you're on the right path because you you know you've kind of already started you're on the right path um, and I, I won't belabor that that's that's something that I'm thinking of doing so looking kind of at each of these factors just kind of going through this spread and and saying them now that can take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes Um, and then, <laughs> and then, usually, I think that was taking about 20 minutes. I think it was like 15 to 20, 25 minutes it would take to do that when I was doing only that. But that then makes me focus so much on the individual cards that I'm not, and I almost create a bunch of statements and questions by going through that without kind of integrating everything. And so another step I've decided to take is to go through, because to me the center card, the center card, the first card and the last card are kind of the most important cards in some ways to at least look at um, in terms of how how things progress from the first card to the last card, and then how things relate to the center. And sometimes even going through this process with the nine categories, it becomes clear what the key parts of the nine cards are. But other times, there ends up still being a question about the center. And so I decided to go back and, and make this part of processing this nine card spread, this elaborate processing, to go back to the center and relate every other card, which would be eight cards, every other card to that center card 
Is it related to it in a positive way, a negative way? Does it advance it? Does it, is it just somebody who's going to meet at that center card? Is it someone who is maybe related to the center card? Does it maybe look like somebody who's employed by? Is it a project of the center card? How do, how do these things relate? And sometimes that does um, tease out some, some things I hadn't seen previously. So I do all that with the first layer of cards, <laughs> which tells you it gets more complicated, right? With whatever is the first deck that I put down. So, so that's all done with that first layer of cards. And then I do um, a clarifying layer with a, with a separate deck. I just bring it out and see how that, um, enlightens or obscures <laughs> what, what I have, uh, started to assume about this set of cards. So I do that with another tarot deck and then I, um, get the dragon it's over there it's that deck there that for the love of dragons and it's it's been doing pretty good i i doubt you know if i had all of my other decks here i doubt i would be using that deck for this but it's been doing pretty good i better than i thought it would and so i've continued to use it um and so i pull one of those for each of the nine positions <clears throat> So I just had to do go and get something to drink, which it is past chamomile time anyway, and uh, do some animal management. So, <laughs> so where was I? Um, on my elaborating on the nine card spread. All right, and so I do the dragons. One dragon card per position. And then I call it done. But as I mentioned, well, and I'll, I'll say this at this point. So what I did is I created a grid. So we have, oops, we have deck one and each of the nine positions, deck two, each of the nine positions. And then um, the oracle card for each of the nine positions but then um and this is actually two so this is one complete one and this is one complete one down here but then here we have all of the categories the nine categories are right there and and so what i can do what I thought I could do is that as I was going through the nine card, I could just mark if if um, card whatever was card number one was a mystery card or a relationship card and or this is all and or, um, you know, a sensitivity card or whatever. I could mark them here and then just sort of end up. I don't really have one filled out here handy, but can keep track of for any given card, how many categories were ticked off, or um, I didn't make a summary column here, but I could have, um, I have been keeping track of how many cards uh, were mystery cards, how many cards were crossroads or initiation cards, etc. That is all this tracking stuff has ended up being kind of like this tracking stuff. It's not, it's a thing to do. It's, it's like an obsessive compulsive thing to do, um, except that it has nothing to do with neatness. What it has to do with is taking something I have done and then rehashing it and kind of rehashing it and looking at it again. 
and just tracking it as a mental activity. It's just a mental activity. As, as a way to just engage my mind, it doesn't bring about any great like revelations or meanings. Um, I hope someday I won't be doing any of this, but it's kind of serving a function for me now. Um, for one thing, it has made me aware of how complicated this is. So one of the, the things, that, as I worked with this more, one thing I found is that um, I really do like nine card spreads. I like that three by three card spread and that as I would go through the categories, um, and and some of the real resulting things and slowed down, sometimes um, a pattern or process that I think that I wouldn't have seen otherwise starts to form. Um, so it can be worthwhile in that regard. You know, whether I wouldn't have seen those before, I don't know. I think it also serves to um, just as an intuitive exercise, actually, so that the more that I do it, um, just the more engaged I'm starting to feel with the reading process. Um, sometimes I will read things fairly quickly, uh, which is, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, But I think it does help to slow down, um, particularly regarding what's going on with the more, well, the cards that seem less relevant to a spread or just are not sure what it has to do with, uh, with the spread in general or what what part of that card's meaning is really dominant in the situation. Um, so another thing that I, I did after a while though, after doing this and looking at the categories and the fact that, you know, I'm, I don't know how many pairs I have of the deck pairs that I had. One thing when I went through the deck pairing exercises I was doing there for a while, just seeing what decks worked well together, is that the Morgan Greer is a clarifier for almost anything. <laughs> it can be used for almost anything. It can be used as the lead deck and can be used as a clarifier for almost anything. Um, but, you know, these two, this, the morning spread and the nine card spread, both of which use, you know, two cards um, as part of the message, um, have, have gotten so that they've used up, or they have put, let me say this, they have put in use pretty much all of my tarot decks, which is great. So I'm using them regularly, I'm seeing them regularly, I'm getting to know them. Um, I mean, I knew them all anyway. The decks that I decided to keep with me, for the most part, were not um, mysterious. Um, but I, so what I, especially with like the mysteries and things, I found that these categories ended up bringing up questions or the sensitivities and stuff like that that I, I thought it would be nice to have more information on. And so I came up with deck assignments um, that were not the tarot. I don't know that they're all Oracle. They might all be Oracle. I'm not even sure where I have it written down. I think it's going to be over here. Um, the herbal tarot. And the Kawaii Tarot actually were also used Influence of Angels. So I do have, I have both um, Chakra and Oracle cards. 
So I was assigning, so exact, for example, if I were to go back through one of these spreads and um, in one spread that I did recently, this is the only one. Okay, so I, what I did was I said, all right, so how deep am I getting myself into? So as a mental exercise, I assigned decks to each of the categories so that if I had further questions about from one of these nine card spreads, which is already taking an hour. <laughs> In other words, if I do all of those parts, it's usually taking from 40 minutes to an hour to do all of that. But it's like if I wanted to dig in deeper and really like look into the mysteries or the initiations. So I, so I did this with one of these. So at first what I did was I just... I thought, well, I'll just mark on here, on this little chart diagram thingy, um, whether a card was a mystery card, and then I'll just pull from another deck, I'll just pull a card. And then I thought, you know what, that's, I need to articulate, I need to, you know, I need to articulate what the mystery is and why I'm pulling a card. And when I went through and I re-listened to one of them, and I was I was listening for within the categories what questions I had or what things I would need to pull another card on. And this is what I came up with. So it's a ridiculous amount, right? It's huge. I mean, this could take a month to go through. Um, for example, in this particular spread, the Page of Wands was facing the Queen of Cups, and, and the question, one of the mysteries was, what is their relationship? Why is the Page of Wands facing the Queen of Cups? I had an assumption about that, but it's easily something that I could pull um, uh, a card on. And among the mysteries, there were six. So there's like six questions that I could be asking, in this case, the Fairies Oracle, about this previous nine card spread. So what would that be? That would be maybe one day that I would spend on that. So this is like maybe not nine, maybe not nine days worth, but, and I wouldn't want to say if you had the nine card spread and when you came across the mystery to, to have a deck ready, then I would have to have all of the decks ready. And that would be um, nine decks for all of the categories and two tarot decks and the dragon deck. That would be shuffling, what is that, 9, 10, 11, 12 decks? <laughs> that would be shuffling 12 decks for one spread. And so I'm not going to do that. Um, I could just, although there's still too many, there's too many of these questions to just have one other tarot spread and have an, another a single tarot spread. So it would essentially be separate days wouldn't necessarily have to be nine separate days. Um, so I could see doing these together and these together. So what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six, and this might be a short seven. So that would be kind of like um, doing it over the course of a week. So doing the nine card spread at the beginning of the week and then doing a bunch of clarifiers about it. Now, using the different decks for each of the categories. Is that overkill? Yes, that is overkill. But I'm doing this as an exercise for me in terms of just a mental exercise. But it's still a bit much, and it's a bit much for me to be wrapping my head around as well. Um, so I kind of created this grid and now I seriously question whether I'll use it because it's it's on the too much. 
And this is a process, if you've been with me any length of time, well, I would say if you've been with me for years, you would have seen this process where I get intrigued by something, I explore it, then I blow it up so it's really elaborate, and chances are then it's dropped or it is contracted again. And so I'm thinking of contracting this to, I'm going to keep the categories, but I'm going to try now three cards. So I'm not going to do it this evening because it's getting a little late. I need to just focus on relaxing, drinking my chamomile tea, and going into sleepy time. But what I'm thinking is I'm going to try just doing three cards. So pulling three cards, I don't know, whenever, afternoon and evening, something to wind down to or I don't know that it would fit into an additional thing in the morning at this point, but um, and go ahead and do all of the nine categories with those three cards and then from that with only three cards involved um, through the course of I don't know, a week, a couple of days, try those elaborations on the categories. Um, so the most I would have with any category would be three cards, which each card could have more than one question. But that makes it much more manageable to, you know, knock off a couple of like to do the mysteries and the initiation cards one day and the blessing and helpers cards the next day. Um, and that would help me see whether or not those elaborations, in other words, pulling additional cards on the mystery cards, on the ally cards, on the sensitivity cards, whether pulling extra cards of them really adds anything to the reading or not. Or if that's if that's the place where I've gone overboard and I need to forget about the idea of further exploring these things. Or maybe there's some of this stuff is worth exploring further and some of it simply isn't. Um, or maybe some of these nine categories just need to be pitched. <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um, Yeah. So that's something that I'm I'm exploring. I'm in the process of ex of exploring. And I'm enjoying it, but I but again, it's a a function for this time and whether I can turn it into something that is worth doing in other ways. for when I'm no longer, hopefully, in this time of my life where I'm like, I'm just trying to stay awake here. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay, give me something to do that isn't reading. I'm trying to stay awake. Um, but that's, it's also pulling all of those cards is one of the reasons why, why this has been more interesting and has um, had a lot of cards like, what is it? On the 15th, I had 13 major arcana cards. And that's just the major arcana cards that came up that day. So um, if I was only doing the morning, for example, today I only did the morning spread, and I have four major arcanas. And yesterday I only did the morning spread, and I only had four major arcana cards. <laughs> so. It makes a big difference in terms of whether or not this activity is worthwhile. Oh, Lordy. So that's, that's, how, that's what I'm doing with cards these days. That's how it's serving me to help test my wakefulness, helping me to stay awake or unwind in the evening, one or the other. 
and um, use my brain and and help me gauge how well my brain is working you know if all I want to do is track the cards I've used for the day then my brain is not working very well then there needs to be another level <laughs> But anyway, but for now, I'm happy to have it as an activity, even if it's kind of faux meaningful. It doesn't, it isn't terribly meaningful, but I can pretend that it's meaningful. <laughs> and and um, it's helping me gauge my, where I'm at mentally and in terms of wakefulness. Alrighty, take care everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.